What's up, guys? I'm Ari Rochelle, and this is The End Times. As Christians, we all know about the Lamb's Book of Life, and we all have the hope that our names are written in that book. But this begs the question, how is our names written in that book in the first place? Well, let's turn to one of my favorite books of the Bible, Revelation. When John saw the vision of the beast out of the sea recorded in Revelation chapter 13, which we have a very in-depth video on, on who that beast is and what his purpose is, which is under our The End Times category and is called the beast out of the sea, John sees that the beast will be worshipped by everyone on earth whose name hasn't been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Matter of fact, he says the names were written in the Lamb's Book of Life from before the foundation of the world. Let's read that real quick. Revelation chapter 13 verse 8, and all who dwell on the earth will worship it. Everyone whose names has not been written before the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who was slain. If our names have to be written in the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world, does that mean that we're all set on a path that we don't really have a choice in? Are each of us predestined to a specific path that we have no choice but to follow the path written for us? That would mean all those who die in their sin were chosen by God to die in their sin. But is that the heart of God? Let's see what Peter says God's overall will is for humanity. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promises, some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. This is Peter explaining that the day of the Lord isn't slow or taking too long, but instead the day of the Lord will come at the perfect time because God doesn't desire that any perish, but all repent and be saved. This isn't the only time we see this either. God says this from the days of the law and the prophets, Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 11 says, Say to them, as I live, declares the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? According to God himself, he says he has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Now some will say that this is about the wicked in the house of Israel. Sure. But keep in mind, from the days of the law, God showed no partiality between Israel and the rest of the world. Here's what I'm saying. Exodus chapter 12, verses 48 through 49 says, If a stranger shall sojourn with you and would keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised. Then he may come near and keep it. He shall be as a native of the land, but no uncircumcised person shall eat of it. There shall be one law for the native and for the stranger who sojourns among you. The Passover was the foreshadowing of salvation through Jesus' sacrifice. This is probably the most important feast because without it, there would be no salvation. This isn't the only time God says this either. Numbers chapter 15 verses 15 through 17 says, For the assembly there shall be one statute for you and for the stranger who sojourns with you, a statute forever throughout your generations. You and the sojourner shall be alike before the Lord. One law and one rule shall be for you and for the stranger who sojourns with you. Peter even understands and explains the same sentiment after he goes to see Cornelius, the Roman centurion, who God sent him to teach. Acts chapter 10 verses 34 through 35. So Peter opened his mouth and said, truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. So then when God said that he didn't take pleasure in the death of the wicked in Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 11, he was talking about all the wicked and not just the wicked in Israel. Therefore, it can't be predestination that dictates our lives. So how do we get our names written in the Lamb's book of life? Well, according to the verse we read earlier, Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, your name has to be written in the Lamb's book of life from before the foundation of the world. That means from the very beginning. So the only way that works is if everyone who will ever be conceived their names must all be written in the Lamb's Book of Life before the foundation of the world. Now, some will say, isn't that now universalism? Well, no. And here's why. Names cannot be added after the foundation of the world, but they can be blotted out. 
Now, before you think I'm tripping, let's take a look at Moses and God's conversation after the Israelites built the golden calf and worshipped it. Exodus chapter 32, verses 30 through 34. The next day, Moses said to the people, you have sinned a great sin and now I will go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. So Moses returned to the Lord and said, alas, this people has sinned a great sin. They made for themselves gods of gold. But now if you will forgive their sin, Sin, but if not, please blot me out of your book that you have written. But the Lord said to Moses, whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. But now go lead the people to the place about which I have spoken to you. Behold, my angel shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. Both Moses and God speak about blotting people out of a book that God has. What book is that? It's the Lamb's book of life. How can we be sure? Well, what other book holds the names of those who will be ushered into eternal life and has the blotted out names of those who will be ushered into eternal death? And what other book is used to judge so that God can visit their sin upon them as he stated in the verse we just read? Well, some will say that's not what they're talking about. Okay, let's go back to one of my favorite books, Revelation. It starts with the seven churches of Asia. When Jesus is speaking to the fifth church, he says this in Revelation chapter 3, verse 5. The one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments, and I will never blot his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Jesus wouldn't say that he won't do something as a reward if it weren't possible to do that thing in the first place, because then it wouldn't be a reward and Jesus would be deceitful. Therefore, we can be sure that it is not only possible to have your name blotted out of the Lamb's book of life, but it is what will happen to the majority. Why? First, Jesus says this as it is a reward. And the majority will not be rewarded. Let's read real quick Jesus' warning to the people on how to live their lives. Matthew chapter 7 verses 13 through 14. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. If only few find the way that leads to life, then would it not stand to reason that the majority would be on the other road that leads to death? If the majority are on the road that leads to destruction, then they have not conquered. And if they have not conquered, their names have been blotted out of the Lamb's book of life. So when are the names of people blotted out of the Lamb's book of life? Well, Jesus said, if you conquer, then he'd never blot your name out. So that begs the question, when do you conquer? Because only when you conquer, are you safe from the threat of your name being blotted out. To conquer means that you have won. There are only two ways to win. The first is through dying in Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control lest after preaching to the others, I myself should be disqualified. According to Paul, the greatest apostle who ever lived, we run a race to attain an imperishable reward. How do we attain an imperishable reward? You must first finish the race. The race is life. The author of the book of Hebrews puts it this way in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despiting the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. In other words, it's not how you start that matters, but it's how you finish. This phrase is more important now more than ever before because of the amount of temptation and false teachings in this world trying to deceive us. So many of us are starting the race out strong, but not even finishing. 
the only way to finish, the only way to conquer is to die while still following Christ Jesus with his Holy Spirit dwelling within you. Therefore, it would stand to reason the only way to have your name blotted out of the Lamb's book of life is to die in your sin unredeemed and unsaved. Of course, there are exceptions to this rule, but I don't want to get too, too deep. There is the case of committing the unforgivable sin, and in doing so, you cause yourself to spiritually die to the point where there is no longer the option of forgiveness and salvation for you, according to Matthew chapter 12, verses 22 through 32. But since I believe this is a rare sin to commit in this life because it didn't seem like the Pharisees even committed it, since Jesus pled for their forgiveness from the cross according to Luke chapter 23 verse 34, so let's move on. The other way to conquer is to be raptured up. Paul states that this is a mystery he revealed to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 50 through 53. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable and this mortal body must put on immortality. This is the second way to conquer, when we are raptured up and changed from perishable to imperishable. The only way to be raptured up and changed in the blink of an eye is if we conquer. This now begs the question, how could our names be written in the Lamb's Book of Life before the foundation of the world? Well, it's because it was written in heaven, not on earth. As we stated in our creation series, which is under our too deep category, heaven was the first thing God created, according to Genesis 1-1, and he created it in its entirety as it was and is and will always exist in eternity. But earth, he took six days to create because he was setting up time that earth has and this earth always will dwell in. Therefore, the Lamb's Book of Life would have been created and written from the moment heaven was created in all of its entirety. Jesus seems to be of the same understanding according to the Gospel of Luke. Jesus sent out the 72 apostles and they came back rejoicing because the demons were even subject to them in his name. But look what Jesus says, Luke chapter 10, verse 17 through 20. The 72 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Jesus said to rejoice that their names were written in heaven. This is where the Lamb's book of life was and is. It's in eternity with God. So let's sum everything up for you guys. All the names of everyone who will ever be conceived were written in the Lamb's Book of Life from before the foundation of the world, which would be from the foundation of heaven. When we die or are raptured up, we conquer. And if we conquer, Jesus will never blot our names out of the Lamb's Book of Life. But if we die in our sin, then Jesus will blot our name out of the Lamb's book of life, and we will spend eternity in hell away from him according to Revelation chapter 20 verse 15. I hope this cleared up a few questions that you may have had on the Lamb's book of life and how it works and that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.